Hey YouTubers, it's me again. This is that uh, follow-up video on the the pool on that came in to me that had a little problem. So, um, if you look on uh, YouTube, you'll see that there's a lot of guys that are having a, a hard time with uh, starting up their chainsaws again. Particularly, it seems like Poulon is like one of the big culprits uh, after they've been running for a while. So, anyways, this is what I've come up with. I think y'all know how anal I am, but, um, first of all, for some of you guys that are like, maybe just ran down to Harbor Freight, you got a coupon, you got a chainsaw, and, uh, you're out using it, um, and it starts doing like this, but you don't really understand too much about, uh, the saw itself and how it works, uh, I'm going to step over here into the laboratory and, uh, explain to you exactly what's going on inside your carburetor and inside your your chainsaw so basically um, these things aren't really engineered by NASA or anything they're not really um, super super technical they're like, there's a few things that have just you know that are absolutely basic that have to be right in order for these things to perform and to perform properly and each time you use them put them away and then come back to using them they're not the same as like when you started off the the previous time uh there's dust there's dirt you know uh that enters into the filter which ends up uh inadvertently uh, richening the mixture which makes more fuel run into it it makes it you know uh sometimes a little bit harder starting there's just all kinds of things uh the fuel that's being sucked out of the tank it's uh it has to be uh, vented uh, in order for the fuel to make its way into the engine so I mean there's just a lot of stuff so if you're if you're having troubles with your saw you got to make sure that you're taking care of the basic stuff first okay so you want to make sure that your fuel's not contaminated and sometimes that can happen without you even knowing or you know of, of really of no fault of your own so I'm gonna explain a couple of these things and uh, see what you guys have to say about it so anyways i've set up this one of the things is like you want to make sure that uh there's no contamination in your fuel okay so what i actually went and i set up here is like i've got a a little glass jar here filled with uh some fuel and then there's a there's a fuel line that's uh sticking up out of it and basically what happens Here's the here's a carburetor right here, and if you look around the outside bore, let me see if I can get a better focus on this. If you look at the outside bore of this, come on, focus, baby. You'll notice that it's larger around the outside, around the the circumference. Okay, and then inside it gets smaller. It's hard to look through the finder. But it's actually much smaller in the in the middle, and what that does, you look at it through the backside here down that barrel, you can see like now you can really see that it's noticeably smaller. So basically, that's a choke point that the air is going through. You're taking air going from like a, a hole this big down to a hole this big, and it speeds it up. That's actually called the venturi. So what happens is, is like as the the piston is going down, actually in a two-stroke, when the piston is going up, it's drawing air down into the crankcase. Then on the downstroke, it takes the mist, which is created when the air goes rushing through that carburetor. It will take and turn the fuel into a mist that goes into the bottom of the crankcase as the piston goes down. It's forced up the sides through the ports. And so to show you exactly what it's supposed to be doing in real life is like watch across the top of this uh, fuel line and watch the mist that comes out. You see that? That's what it's supposed to be doing inside your, your carburetor. Then it gets compressed and becomes more volatile and that's like 
when the spark plug fires, that's what makes it go boom. That's what happens. So now I'm gonna purposely gonna take and pour a little bit of water into this down into the, the glass. So here you are. You know, you're like getting ready to start out the season brand new again. And you can't see it. But down through here now, you see how that separated? The fuel is setting on top, and then the bottom is all water. Okay? Well, the chainsaw, the carburetor, the weed whacker, whatever it is, even your four stroke lawnmower, doesn't know the difference. And so. When you're pulling on it, that little bit of pulse that goes by, so now it's water and not fuel, it still will miss it. It'll still go in there, but it just won't explode. Okay? That's one thing. <clears throat> Another thing is that in the old days, you didn't really, this wasn't really as big of a problem except for i don't know what it's like in the rest of the world but out here in arizona there's like it's up to 10 percent ethanol and what happens is is ethanol is a high hygroscopic fluid you know put that on there let's see if you can see it by adding ethanol to the to the gasoline it turns it into a hygroscopic fluid and it will absorb water just right from the from the air same thing is like uh, that's why they tell you like if you're filling up your uh, brake lines or your your clutch lines and stuff is always use new fluid when you're filling that stuff up because it will absorb water and it doesn't compress you know what I'm saying so if you're sitting there and you don't have one of these these are these new silly pain in the butt uh, gas tanks. Like they have these these little locks on them. This one's the worst. I hate this one. But for the same reason that it can't spill is like it can't let moisture come in from the air and go into the bottom. So if you were to kind of look at it, and this picture is drawn exactly 100% to scale. <laughs> just kidding <laughs> here's what it would look like inside the tank if you left it in a like an older tank that uh, doesn't have a, a shut off or a vent is like there's the gas fluid is up here okay there's that level and then the oil that you that you've pre-mixed and stuff because this is an exact diagram and then it can take and pull moisture out of the air and actually uh, go into the bottom. And so what happens is like when you go to take and pour this out, what's going to happen is like that water is like going to be going in there first. Then once it gets into the fuel cell of your whatever it is, your lawnmower or uh, inside your chainsaw is like the fluid goes to the bottom well that's where that the fuel filter is that's the first thing it's going to try to pick up is that water so you see here it is that's what's happening down there it's got some water in it oh no how come my saw doesn't work and then uh i did have one guy he brought me in three pieces of equipment for one of the first things i do is take and dump out the fuel and check it for contamination and uh, after the first two, I thought he would have caught on and gone and uh, checked his fuel uh, gas tank because the first one had water in it, the second one had water in it, and he still actually he brought me the third one and said, "Like, dude, you just like dump out your gas can and uh, start all over." So, anyways, and then another thing in order for the fuel to run is like. If I was to take and put a lid on the top of this so that no air could get in, I'd be able to take and blow the, the air across the top of that tube and only a little bit of, fu of fuel would mist get uh, emulsified and come out. And then eventually it would stop because it, it'll take and create a, a vacuum 
inside the jar. Well, the same thing happens to your gas tank. So what they do in order to com combat that, let me see if I can hold my phone here for a second. What they do for, to take care of that problem is this, I have this uh, gas cap. It's actually out of a weed whacker, but it's, it's another two stroker. Hard to see here. But if you look right there in the middle, it has this, this little thing sticking out of it right there. Okay. So what happens is like when the vacuum gets created in the, the tank, this opens up and it allows the air to come in and normalize the pressure in the tank. It's the same thing as like what you, I just showed you. Like if I took and I put my hand on the top of that uh, jar, it would stop the fuel from flowing. Make sure that your cap is still clean and everything because if these get clogged, then that air is not going to be able to come through down here. Okay? That's another thing. Okay? Here's the most interesting one and in that I find is uh, very particular to Poulons because I ha happen to own one. Let me come back over here into the shop. <clears throat> okay. This is mine. We call her Bumblebee. Had it for about, I don't know, four years. Got down to Harbor Freight, had a coupon. Didn't cost too much. This is the, the Poulon that came in last night that had the, the chain issue that I fixed. So anyways, here's what's going on, guys. It's, if you, mm, how do I explain this? It's a little bit tricky, but first of all, you'll notice like that the filter is actually fairly what by looking at it is like that the filter is actually fairly clean it's just stained from fuel okay so i'm going to take this out and i'm going to hold it up to the light you can see like you know what it really does because i was actually breathing through it is that it, it is actually blocked there and then I, I just blew it out and it's actually blocked up at the top so here's what i found once I got it running and everything, obviously that goes there. The filter goes on there like that. And then here's the cover. This is what it would what it would look like. Okay. I'll explain that tape here in a second. So when this when the chainsaw is operating, okay, it's warming up. Basically, see what it is, like you take and you're gonna pull the choke. Okay. By pulling that, by pulling that choke. It activates a linkage over here on the side. Now watch that little arm down there. Let me focus. And what it does is like it cracks the throttle. See that? It cracks the throttle. And yet it closes off the barrel down on the bottom. This has actually got... It's only one barrel, but there's one, two. It's like there's there's actually three butterflies in here, two throttle bodies that all run... That, that, run together so anyways there's that there's that part of it what happens is so this filter is on there like this and because this is what happened to me it's like uh be out there start it up you know no problem regular chainsaw issues uh be running it cutting stuff or whatever and then uh set it down and then i would go to restart it and it would not start it's like so many other guys have said on here. It's like it's got a vapor lock or something. So what I did was, was like I took everything off. I got it going again. And then I wanted to take and adjust the, the carburetor. While it was running, I took it like, and once I opened it, the throttle all the way up, you see like, it's kind of like a two barrel carburetor. It's like. The bottom one's already open, and then here comes the, the top butterfly opens up, and it allow, allows massive air to go in there, which in turn draws more fuel, more air into it. Well, the problem was, is like when I when I was using the, adjusting the, the carburetor, 
I'm squeezing like this, and I'm actually watching fuel come out this way. I'm like, what the hell is going on with that? <clears throat> my, in, my thought was, it's not breathing well enough, okay? So I didn't mess with it with the carburetor anymore. I put it back, and then I'm looking at the stain in the bottom of the filter. I'm looking at how, how clogged that is. So I decided what I would do is I took and I opened up the top of this air cleaner. So now that I, now I can breathe. So I, I haven't, I'm not allowing any extra foreign dirt or anything to go in there because there's, there's the filter. It still fits over it, which I think these suck anyways. There's that. So now when I go and I start it up, and you do generally like when it's already warm, he's like, I'll just sit there and I'll like I'll hold the throttle open, give it one pull, and it fire right back up. No problem. It's breathing through there. Because before, all it was doing is like it's trying to get all its air from down here. Then it's gotta then it's gotta come up. I don't know. And I have no idea what the hell these guys were thinking about when they did this. If you've ever seen uh like your buddies chainsaw or worked on them you see like how uh husqvarna's got that real nice clamshell air filter i mean you, you don't have issues with a husqvarna or a steel like you do with these pulons to me that was what the deal was so once i get done with it this i did this like whatever two years ago this saw is like three years old trust and verify right so once i made that opening and the problem went away I took and I put tape over it, and I went back to using it. I did the same thing as it did before. I got it all heated up, and then when I went to go and start it again, it didn't want to start. It was like pulling, pulling, pulling. I'm like, this is ridiculous. So I took it off, and I've never had the problem since. I don't have to mess with the carburetor. I do clean this like almost every time I use it now just to give myself every advantage. If that thing's got good air going in, the carburetor's not going to change all on, on its own. I made sure that I haven't, I don't have contaminated fuel. Uh, it runs. It just it runs when I need it. It does what it's supposed to do. So, over here on this one, same issue. There's the stain. I don't need to hold it up to the light and show you. Just it does the same exact thing. It's got that stain. There's that. See the stain on the top? It's doing the same thing. It's not breathing. It's get, well, as it gets clogged, it has to start going and sucking air from other parts of that filter. And that's what I found. So for this guy, I already did the test. I aerated it by putting three more holes up top, and the issue has gone away. And I'm not, I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just telling you what I did to mine, and the problem's gone. Thing works, works as good as any any saw out there. And I did it for this guy here because he asked me to. You see, there's nothing more more aggravating when you got a job to do and you're standing around or you're just like pulling, 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 trying to get the damn thing started again. You're just aggravating. I mean, it works hard enough. You don't need to be aggravated over it. So this is another one of those oddball things that I like to share with you guys. And if you if you got any comment, you think I'm nuts, whatever. You wouldn't be the first one. Uh, leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down. Whatever you think. But I hope this helps uh, some of you guys. Talk to you later. Catch you on the next video.